Hello, who is this? Do I see a Salesforce professional, someone who's working every single day, learning something new, overcoming challenges, persisting? Good job. So nice to meet you. I'd like to share with you a video that I've been thinking about for the last couple of months. The video title is, if I could go back seven years to the very beginning of my Salesforce journey, what would I do better? It's been seven years now that I'm a Salesforce professional and I've seen a lot of things and I would like to share with you things that I would do better so that you can avoid those mistakes, so that you can take the right steps, make the right decisions and get to where I am faster, with more pleasure, less stress. Before we get into my advice, I'd like to tell you where I am today. Six things. First, I worked at five different companies. I worked at startups as well as major corporations such as Accenture and Deloitte. My starting salary was about $90,000 and now it's about double that. And I've been a contractor and a full-time developer, entry-level developer, and now I'm a Salesforce manager. I have taught Salesforce at the largest community college in the state of Maryland, Montgomery College. I've taught Salesforce at a Native American reservation, and I'm the leader of the Salesforce developer group in Baltimore. In my sales seven year Salesforce journey, I've made a ton of mistakes, so many painful mistakes lost so much time i've almost given up i was so desperate for guidance i was so desperate for growth for understanding i had so many frustrating moments and i was thinking what could i what advice could i give to my viewers so that you guys can have a more effective journey so my first advice is find a mentor when i was learning salesforce i i was an mba consultant at Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield. I had just completed my MBA from University of Virginia, had moved to Owings Mills, Maryland, and, and was working for Care First. By chance, one of my consulting projects at Care First was helping the sales team uh, learn Salesforce better. And as I was learning Salesforce better so that I can teach them, I fell in love with this technology. I thought this is amazing, powerful, tour de force that would, it just blew my mind. I decided to forget about MBA career track and let's get all in into Salesforce. This was the best decision in my life. This was back in 2015, 16. At that time, there were, I could just, I was reading everything that I could get my hands on. I read David Liu's blog, which at the time was the most popular Salesforce blog. And he just suggested reading a Java book to learn Apex. And I would read that book. I bought it. And by the way, coincidentally, when I bought that book, it came with a $10 inside it. I bought it on eBay. I thought it was a nice sign. Someone giving me a direction. But that, that book was not so effective. It was confusing me because there are certain things in Java that are different than Apex. And I got confused when these nuances happened. And because I was so new in my journey, I, I could get frustrated. So then a few weeks later, someone suggested learning Visual Force. And I would study that, read some documentation about it, read blogs. And then at the same time, I was studying for Salesforce certifications and I would go and study that. So I was just winging it and trying to figure things out as I went. I was just like a boat out on a, sh on a mission, but I would just get pushed around by wherever the Salesforce wins, the information would send me. So I was doing my best, but I was going in fits and rounds and and this was a very painful time for me because I, I couldn't understand Java well. I couldn't understand Visual Force well. A lot of the terminology seemed really strange to me. I didn't know about Agile. And it is truly a miracle that I kept persisting. This is a... That I kept pushing it day by day. I kept studying and studying and maintaining my, my demeanor, my positivity. And I'm truly grateful that I persisted. But if I could go back, I would... This whole journey would have been much easier if I had a mentor, if I had someone who told me, take this step, next this step, this step. These are the hundred steps you have to take in the next three months. What you can take hundred steps with a mentor, I took 300 steps and they went in all different directions. Mm -hmm. At that time, I did know that I needed a Salesforce mentor, but I didn't know where to find them. If you look online, Google my name, you can see my posts in different places where I said, hey, I'm looking for a mentor. Can someone help me? Can someone hold my hand? Show me what steps do I need to take. Here are two ways, easy ways you can find yourself a mentor that I just realized in the re last few years. 
but at the time I did not know. So first, the easiest way to find a mentor is to join a Salesforce bootcamp. Bootcamps are prepared specifically to help you accelerate your Salesforce journey. They've laid out the program. They, they specialize in teaching career changers. They specialize in helping you get from career changer to getting a Salesforce job offer. They've laid it out. I know that career bootcamps of different qualities, but, but they have the same mission. Okay, you have to do some research to see which one is the best. But overall, the mission is the same. Okay, they work on making you a Salesforce professional from where you are. If you join a co coding a Salesforce bootcamp, uh, they will show you the steps you need to take to become a Salesforce professional. Okay, so they, you know what are the 100 steps one by one that you need to take. The upside of the coding bootcamps obviously is that, is that they're effective. They have the game plan for you. Okay, they give you like a, a manual. You come to class, they teach you, you go to the next steps, you have a group of people, you guys push each other, inspire each other. There's an instructor who can answer your questions, he can guide you. So that's a huge upside, right? It's a set program that you follow. The, the downside is that they, they cost money, okay? But you have to pay for things that, that are effective, right? I spent so many hours on things could have been avoided. That was not that was not necessary to learn at my stage, but because Salesforce was saying this is important, and then somewhere else I said, read it was important. I read that thing. I would read it up, but I would not understand. I would get frustrated. And I wasn't sure if I'm supposed to be understanding it. So one of the things was like SQL injection. Salesforce on the exams kept talking about SQL injection. I, I, I read it. I couldn't understand it. And I lost so much time trying to understand things. If I were a mentor right now, I would say, forget about it. Okay, focus on the core things. Joining a coding bootcamp will help you avoid a lot of wasted time. Like I highly recommend it. Although it costs money, highly recommend it. Okay, it's it's better to make progress daily and get closer to your goal than just float around like I did. The second way to find a mentor is to go to outwork.com and make a job posting. Say, hey, I have a budget of $40 an hour. Can someone help me become a Salesforce developer from US? And you'll have a bunch of people reach out to you. They say, hey, I'm a Salesforce developer or, a man, or an administrator. I, I know where you are coming from. I was there and I can help you get to where I am right now, be a Salesforce developer. Here are the 10 steps I took. We can set up my weekly calls. I check it on you. I can give you assignments. And I think that's very doable. The good thing about this is this it's very affordable. If you just meet a couple of times a week, that's like maybe $200 a week. Yeah, this is coding bootcamps on the other hand can cost from $8,000 to $14,000. Okay, the downside though is that you're studying alone and making big overcoming pain alone is very difficult. Okay, if it's like me going to a gym and trying to learn certain regimen, get stronger on myself. It takes tremendous self-will, tremendous energy to convince myself to go to the gym every single day to show up. Okay, it's much easier if, if I was part of a group of people who are also doing the same thing and just herd mentality and I just follow what everyone else is doing. Okay, it take, it's much less taxing on the mind. And if you have tremendous self-will, going the solo route is fine. So next advice is be patient. A lot of things will not click boom, 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 boom. You have to give it time, especially coding. When I was learning programming, a lot of the object oriented con concepts were foreign to me. I didn't understand the concept of an object. Why do we have to put brackets for methods? Why do we need semicolons at the end of a line? Why do we need some methods to return values while others we do not want? I thought computers are so smart. Why don't they just write what I want them to write? Why don't they just understand what I meant? To write. Why are they so picky? If I forgot a semicolon, then now the whole thing stops. I had so many frustrating moments and things just didn't make sense. And then when I was doing Apex for beginner modules on Trailhead, the, this module should take 30 minutes. And it would take me 50 minutes and I felt so dumb. I thought something wrong with me and I didn't feel motivated to continue learning Apex. And the stuff was not clicking. I just was forcing myself, forcing myself, forcing myself. I could see others learning and picking things up and explaining things. And I thought, when would the stuff make sense to me? I'm just brute forcing it. But I still dreamed that one day I would be a coder. I just didn't know when, I just dreamed about it. I remember seeing a co colleague of mine, he did something with code, like deleted a lot of records, just using code and was like, wow, this is magic. I wish one day I can do it. And of course I could do it one day. A couple, but it just happened a couple of years later. So that was with Apex and same with JavaScript. When I was learning JavaScript, I'm like, wow, why so 
Now I just got used to Apex. JavaScript works a bit differently. You don't need to put semicolons. You don't need to in, in indicate the data type. I can pick up JavaScript pretty fast now. And I feel I feel very comfortable with Apex. I, it's a tremendous, amazing feeling when the stuff just becomes intuitive, okay? So my, pay, my advice, what I realize is be patient. S things will not click right away. Something might click one month later, one year later, four years later. Okay, just give it time. But the most important thing is you just have to keep persisting, okay? All right, my third piece of advice is have the support of your family and be ready to sacrifice. When I was learning Salesforce, I would come from work at 6 p.m., have dinner, relax time until 6.45 and start studying at 7 p.m. I would study on weekends from about 12 p.m. till 8 p.m. At the time I was learning sales, I had a two-year-old son and a newborn daughter. My wife was taking care of the kids and my dad especially came from Europe for us to help with house chores, the kid chores. I was very lucky that my wife at the time supported me, that my father came and looked after the kids so that I can dedicate myself full-time to Salesforce studying and learning. I've seen countless cases among my students where they are trying to learn Salesforce, but their husband is working or their truck driver driving around while they have to tend to kids, the house things. And it's very difficult for them to focus and learn something very complicated like Salesforce. Okay, one needs quiet time, silent time in order to put full mind to it. And this is especially, especially important when you're taking certification exams, when you are taking interviews, you need total quiet time so you can totally focus on that one task. To successfully learn Salesforce, it is, it is critical that you have the support of your family. Okay, talk to them. Tell them, hey, I want to learn Salesforce. Can you guys get my back? This will be about a six months learning journey. Maybe one hour every day for kids, for house things, but rest of the time I will be learning. Please help me out. This will work out. I don't guarantee it, but I'll do my best in order to make it happen. And learning Salesforce is a very difficult process, very time consuming process. It will take you at least five months of attending a program and it will take you at least three hours a day of studying, okay, and more hours on weekends. But the results are amazing. Once you get a job offer, you will totally feel the difference of a non-tech career and a tech career. Working as a tech career is a totally pleasant life, totally amazing life. And that's why it's totally worth you investing, making the sacrifice and getting the support of your family. Okay, so so this was my video about three things I would do different if I could go back. First was, I wish I could find a mentor, work with a mentor who would guide me. Second is, I wish I was more patient. I was very restless. I was wanting to learn this and that, and I would get frustrated when things would not get make sense and I felt like I was dumb. I felt like I was supposed to be understanding. I was getting frustrated, but be patient, okay? Things will start clicking. And third thing, get the support of your family. I was very lucky that I had the support of my family, but this, this was not planned, okay? It just happened, uh, but in the future, it's important that you communicate with your family and get their support so that you can totally dedicate yourself to learning and succeeding, okay? I hope you enjoyed your video. Please smash that like button, leave your comments, leave your thoughts below. I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much.